I always get questions around recording a solo podcast. So today I am gonna take you behind the scenes of what it's like for me to record episodes of my daily show, The Potty Report. It's my show that's five minutes or less and I put it out every Monday through Friday. And I wanna take you behind the scenes of what it's like for me to batch these podcast episodes and what it looks like. So let's get right to it. Hey y'all, Crystal here today. So if you are new to the channel or you haven't watched it, make sure you check out this playlist right here that has all the videos for solo podcasters, including what it's like to record your show and a little bit more into the mindset of it's weird. Let's just, let's just call it what it is. It's weird to start a solo podcast and you're talking to yourself and all the things like go watch those videos if, you, or if you're having any of those mindset blocks. But in today's video, I'm gonna show you behind the scenes of what it actually looks like when I'm recording. I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step exactly what I do. So let's go to the computer. So if you don't already know this, I use Asana, A-S-A-N-A. It is my project management tool that I love and I swear by. You can go check out these videos here where I've done previous tutorials on how I use Asana and Google Sheets to really help organize the back end of my podcast. But this specifically is my content calendar. And this is where I would go to plan out episodes and YouTube videos. It's where I write just so much of my content is done in Asana. And so I'm actually gonna go down to the Potty Report episode that's due tomorrow, because I'm actually going to record these today. But I wanna show you what this looks like. So what I've done, and I can make this full screen, what I've done is I will go through before I record my solo episodes. Now granted, these are five minutes or less, and so whenever I record these, I do them in a batching period of, takes me about 30 minutes between planning and then recording the episodes, but you're actually gonna see firsthand what it's like for me to record this episode because I'm gonna do it right here live. But, uh, or not live, you get what I'm saying. I'm doing it live for you, but you're gonna watch this and it's pre-recorded, you get what I'm saying. But I will jot down a few of the ideas that I wanna talk about on the podcast. And this is not a very detailed outline because again, it's five minutes or less. If you wanna see more about how I script or outline my episodes, make sure you check out these videos right here or check out the video description where I will link to other videos that I've done about scripting and doing outlines, but this is very simple. And um, I am going to open up Hindenburg Journalist. This is the audio software that I use to record my podcast. And I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna show you what it actually looks like when I record my five minute or less episodes because that's why you're here, right? To see what it looks like. So let me open up Hindenburg. And I'm actually going to bring this in to where I can see both of these at the same time. And I don't typically do this whenever I'm recording because I have two separate screens, but for the purposes of showing you exactly what I'm doing, I wanted to have both of them on the screen because if I were recording legitimately a solo podcast that was longer than five minutes, I would be looking at my notes because I wouldn't have the camera on me. I don't have a camera on whenever I typically record my solo episodes. And so what I would do is have Asana on one screen, Hindenburg on the other, and I'm just looking at Asana for the most part. So I'm gonna actually gonna make this to where it's a little bit bigger, and I'm gonna tell you why. I like to see the five minute mark over here in the corner because I know these episodes have to be five minutes or less, which this is close enough. If I get up to 3.20, 3.30, then I know, hey, you need to wrap it up pretty soon because you're recording and like we need to, we, we, we need to get to that five minute mark. Y'all, I have literally recorded episodes that are four minutes and 59 seconds. Like I'm very, very strict on these being five minutes or less. So I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of what Pod Inbox is and you're gonna see this episode live. And if you wanna listen to other episodes, go to the Potty Report. But I'm ready to record in Hindenburg. I've already done a mic check to make sure everything sounded great. And then I always make sure that 
I have the correct mic. It's like one of my, it's a pet peeve of mine. Like I always triple check that my microphone is connected. If you've ever had your webcam accidentally connected or some other random microphone that's in your office connected to your computer, you, you understand, you understand why. Always do a mic check. But here we go. I'm just gonna do a recording of the podcast. <clears throat> Welcome back to another episode of The Potty Report. Today, I am excited to tell you about a new tool that I think will be really helpful for podcasters. It's called Pod Inbox, and it's it's just a really cool tool that I have found to be in replace of a few other tools that seem really outdated to me. So if you've listened to the podcast before, then you may have heard the episode what I did about cross promotions or promo swaps, where I talked about, oh, you can go to a platform like SpeakPipe and record an episode, or not record an episode, record an audio clip, or you can ask your listeners to go and record an audio clip, and they could say, whatever they want in under 90 seconds. Now, I don't recommend telling people just to go to a page and say whatever you want, but what I do or what I did for this particular episode is I said, go there, leave me a message that's between 30 to 90 seconds, and if you talk about your podcast, I will actually air that on the Profit Podcast. You get like a dynamic content ad insertion on the show for... I can't remember if it was so many weeks or so many plays, but it was something really fun that we did. And so whenever Pat, who is the creator of Pod Inbox, came to me and said, hey, this is a cool tool we're working on, and he showed me how simple it was. I told him, I was like, you make SpeakPipe look like it was created in 1980. <laughs> it does. It's, it's old. Like SpeakPipe, you need to update your stuff because it's old, it's outdated, but Pod Inbox is something that I think has a ton of potential to offer many things to future audiences. So here's how it works, and don't worry, there's gonna be a YouTube video coming out very shortly about the actual setup process for creating your own page, but if you're familiar with other pages like a uh, pod page and other places where you have to set up an account like Podchaser, then you'll understand that you have to go in, you have to set up an account and you get all of your shows connected and then you can create a page where you can customize what it says. So for my page, and you'll see this in the upcoming YouTube video, it says, Something along the lines of, thanks for stopping by, please leave a message, and I can't wait to share it on the Profit Podcast in the future. And that's all my message says, and then what people can, and that's just text, right? That's just text. And then I am given the ability to let people record, like they just hit the record button right there on the page, and they can share their thoughts, or they can say, hey, Crystal, love the show, or hey, whoever, Julia, I love listening to your podcast about fitness. I actually have a question. You can customize all of these things in uh, the pod inbox interface. So if you wanted to have listeners leave a question and you want to air them on the show, it's really, really cool. But here's the bigger thing. Here's the bigger picture, right? Because SpeakPipe is another tool that does this and Pod Inbox has just kind of given it a facelift and made it look a lot better. But you are actually able to do lead generation and capture people's emails by having them, if they send you a message, then at that point, you could have access to their email address, which you can then send them something um, through your email service provider. Now, I want to you know, give like a disclaimer that you have to make sure that you're following the GDPR rules and everything that goes, like the nuances that go along with that. But I see Pod Inbox having the potential to really create some momentum for podcasters, and I'm just excited about it. So shout out to Pat who is the one that reached out to me and said, hey, I think that this would be a really cool tool for your podcast community. I'm glad that he did. And 
yeah, we'll see what what happens. So go to podinbox.com to check it out. I'm gonna have a link in the episode description, but that's all I have for you today. So as always, remember, keep it fresh, keep it fun, and just keep going. Okay, that is my solo podcast. (laughs) I did feel a little bit more self-conscious because you're watching me, but that's in a nutshell what happens whenever I'm recording on the back end. Now, I didn't have any major mistakes, and typically even with this podcast, I will not stop and edit everything because it's five minutes. Like if I mess up at the one minute and 30 second mark, I will just stop and start over because it's it's not that difficult. And so I'm sure you're curious to see uh, what the next part of the processes are for me to get this ready to be uploaded into my hosting site. So what I typically do, and I just know this because I've done it so many times, I will shorten this right here because I can usually hear a mouse click and it drives me crazy. I don't like hearing mouse clicks in the show. And then I'll go back to the very beginning because I can see these little kind of, it's a sound wave basically right there. And I know that there's noise. So I will cut that off as well. And I'll bring everything down to around the one second mark. And then I save it. So I'm going to save this episode. And typically when I save things for the potty report, I'll make it a very generic, something that I will remember what it's about. And I may end up changing the title whenever I upload it into Buzzsprout, which is my podcast host. You should go check it out. Go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Buzzsprout. I'm a proud partner with them and they're fantastic. I, I love Buzzsprout so much. But at the end of the day, look, this episode is four minutes and 36 seconds. That's how long it is. Actually, it's not even that long. That's where my cursor was. It's four minutes and 34 seconds. So uh, what I will do at this point is I've saved it. I will export it as a WAV file. So I'm going to export it into my potty report episodes file or folder, excuse me. And then there you go. That's how it's done. That's how I record my solo podcast for the potty report. If you have any other questions about recording a solo podcast, please put them in the comments below. Or if you want to see other behind the scenes videos like this, please let me know. I would love to show you anything else you want to see behind the scenes, but you got to tell me, you got to tell me in the comments what else you would find helpful. But that's all I have for you today. So make sure you hit the thumbs up on this video. If you found it helpful, subscribe below. That way you don't miss our future videos all about podcasting and running your online business. Make sure you check out these other videos right here all about podcasting and running your online business. And as always, remember, keep it up. We all have to start somewhere.